Hi everyone, welcome to Medical Microbiology. So today, we will continue chapter 5. Today, lecture 3, we will discuss about fungi. Okay, we will discuss about uh, fungi, one of the eukaryotic organism. Okay. So remember, eukaryotic organisms are organisms that has nucleus and internal organelles. Okay, there are several of them: fungi, algae, protozoa, and parasitic worms, okay, or helmin, that will be learned in this class. Okay, just for your uh, review, remember again, all organism in this world divided into uh, taxon, okay? It's taxonomy or classification. Remember, the highest taxons will be domain and kingdom. And there are three domain, remember, three domain of organism. The first one is called domain archaea. The second one is called domain bacteria. Okay, and the last one is called domain eukarya okay and there are five kingdom right five kingdom of organism okay the archaea and bacteria they are prokaryotic cell uh, they do not have nucleus do not have organelles okay they are in one kingdom the kingdom is called kingdom monera okay this is for all prokaryotic cell okay. the other four kingdom will be the one that have nucleus which is under the domain of eukarya so will be the kingdom of fungi then kingdom of protists okay and protists divided into two type algae and protozoa Protozoa, okay, and then the next kingdom will be kingdom of plant, okay, plantae, and the last kingdom will be kingdom of animalia, okay. So all of these kingdom over here, two, three, four, and five, they are eukaryotic cell right? therefore today we will start with the first kingdom which is the kingdom of fungi and on the next lecture we will talk about algae and protozoa protozoa which is under the kingdom of protista and then helmins or parasitic worm which is the under the kingdom of animalia we will not talk about plant or plantae because they are mostly mac, uh, macro organism uh, big organism okay remember our class is uh, medical microbiology which is smaller organism okay we start with the kingdom fungi kingdom fungi itself there are two main type which is the first one is the microscopic fungi it means that we can see them yeah? for example mushroom puffballs gill fungi so
so we able to see them with our eyes so they are microscopic we will not learn this fungi in our class okay, because they are microscopic the one that we will study in this class is the microscopic fungi uh, this microscopic fungi there are two types which is hyphae so it has long filament okay, on their structure and sometimes uh, if they combine together we can see them uh, their colony is called molds so molds is actually uh, high pay type of microscopic fungi the second one is yeast okay this is more individual short fungi right. so this is these are the two type of microscopic fungi that we will learn in this class okay uh, this is the illustration of two different type of microscopy fungi. This one over here is the high fe, okay, high fe, the one that has long filament uh, on their body. Okay. And then this one is the yeast. Okay, it's short body, sometimes it's only one individual cell, sometimes two or three, but it's not long like this hyphae okay if you see the hyphae then there are two type of hyphae the first one the one that each cell has border uh, has septum okay so therefore this type of hyphae is called the septic hyphae okay if you see under microscope it's gonna be like this this is the septum the border that separate two cell and each cell will have one nucleus the other type of hype is non septed okay there are no septum between the cell so this is just long one long cell this is one long cell because they are long cell then they have many nucleus in one cell so a lot of nucleus okay in one cell the yeast, yeah, they're gonna be short uh, cell, right? so it's only uh, one cell will have one nucleus. Okay, so this is the hyphae. Okay, so if you see under the microscope, it's gonna be look like this. This is under microscope. Okay, you see this hype okay so long hype and this also have septum so this is septat uh, hype right but if you see with your naked eyes it's gonna be like this this is actually colony of this fungi and this is what we call molds okay sometimes you see molds on the top of the bread or if you drink coffee if you don't need if you leave it for several days then mold will be growing on that uh, food or coffee so this is uh, mold which is if you take sample and then see it under the microscope it's gonna be like this okay. this is the yeast again mostly individual cell sometimes they they have two, three, four, or five cells, but it's very short, okay? Very short filament. And that's what we call the pseudo hype. Pseudo mean fake. Yeah? This is not real hype. Okay? And this is if you see under microscope. Okay? It's going to be look like this. Look like a, a grape. Okay, the fungal nutrition, they are heterotrophic. Uh, hetero mean others. Okay, trophic mean food. Okay, so it means that these fungi have to get food or nutrition from other. So they have to take it from other. They are unable to 
make their own food. So all organism that unable to make their own food is called a heterotrophic. Okay, heterotrophic organism. Okay, this including animal like human because animal cannot make their own food. They have to eat, right? Eat other organism. And then fungi, okay, fungi, they have to absorb. Okay, they have to absorb the nutrient from that uh, organism. Uh, protozoa, uh, protozoa, this is also heterotrophic so they also have to eat okay? and then of course bacteria bacteria also heterotrophic organism so they have to absorb okay sometimes many of them become parasite okay they have to take the nutrients from their host the opposite of Heterotrophic is called autotrophic. Okay, auto means self, trophic means food. So this organism able to make their own food. Example are algae and plant. Okay, this organism able to make their own food using process called the photosynthesis okay so sometimes autotrophic organism is also known as photosynthetic organism they able to make their own food okay so again fungi will be heterotrophic so they absorb the nutrient from other that's the reason why many fungi will be also parasite which is take the nutrient from their host and the disease that caused by fungi is called mycosis okay this is example of mycosis over here which is the skin infection caused by fungi if we take sample over here and then see under the microscope it's gonna be look like this okay do you see the septate uh hyphae okay, under the microscope and this is spore actually you see spore okay, so these examples of uh mycosis uh, which is skin infection that caused by fungi and again many heterotrophic organism if they are small many of them become uh, parasite uh, like bacteria this fungi uh, some protozoa uh, is become a uh, parasite. Animal like, you know, uh, worms, the parasitic worm, they are become parasite. Because what? Because they have to take the nutrient from other. And again, this is what we call the heterotrophic organism. Right? This is how the fungi reproduce. They produce structure is called the spores. A spore is very similar with maybe seeds, okay, in plant. Okay, so they are produced by a structure and then released into the environment, sometimes carried by the wind, okay, and then drop on other place and it is growing into new individual uh, and that's going to be spread like this so this is how this fungi reproduce which is using the spores there are two types of spores the first one is called the asexual spores okay a mean none okay so this is going to be non-sexual spores the spore that is not produced by mating process, not produced by sexual process. Okay, there are two types of non-sexual spores. The first one is called the sporangiospores. 
eh, is a very straightforward. The sporangium spore produced by fungi that has sporangium. What is sporangium? Sporangium is a sac-like structure. Okay, it look like a pocket over here eh, with cover. Okay, and then inside that sporangium, there are a lot of spores in it. Okay, so this spore that produced from the sporangium, then it is called the sporangiospores. Okay, very easy. The second one is called conidia. Okay, so, or conidiospore. The shortest name is conidia. Conidia is the uh, non-sexual spore produced by other structure than sporangium. Okay? Maybe structure like this, eh? and this is become uh, conidia. So maybe it has several names, but their general name is called conidia, which is the non-sexual spore that is produced by other than a structure like sporangium. Okay? So this the same thing. Yeah, there is no coverage over here. There is no uh, sac. Okay, therefore it is it is conidia. Okay? This one is conidia, conidia. This is conidia. All of these are conidia. So this is the second type of non-sexual spore, sporangiospore and conidia. Now, the second type of spore is called sexual spore. Sexual spore is the spore that produced by process of mating. Okay? So there is uh, mating process. Okay, For fungi, we cannot really say male and female or boy and girl. Usually just call positive and negative hype. Okay, so this positive and negative hype, they can perform mating over here. You see that? They combine and finally what happened? They growing and the spore that produced by this side eh, is become uh, sexual spore. Okay, that's the sexual spore. There are three types of sexual spore. First, it's called the zygospore. Okay, it is produced by zygote, eh, which is fertilization of positive and negative hyphae, and then produce this spore, like a zygote. Eh, this zygote is actually spore. So this is what we call the zygospores. Usually this is for the mold that grow in bread, for example. They produce the zygos spores okay and then the second type uh, is called the ascospore okay, it is produced by this mating process and from this mating process they have uh, uh, they make a structure is called the ascus okay ascus therefore the spore that produced by this structure is called the ascospore Ascospore. That's the second type. The third one is called the basidiospore. Okay? This is on gill fungi, for example. Uh, usually the uh, positive and negative hyphae, they mating in the under the ground, okay, in the soil. They mating together over here, and then finally growing into gill fungi over here. And then what happened under this, there will be structure. Eh? It's called the basidium. Okay. Uh, if it is many, it's called basidia. And then this basidia or basidium will produce the spore, and the spore will be called as basidiospores. Okay. So these are the three types of sexual spores of fungi. Now, based on this sexual spore, okay, then fungi can be classified into several phylum. Okay, remember after kingdom, okay, there will be phylum. Okay, 
So there are five phylum of kingdom fungi. The first one is called the phylum Zygomycota. Right, from the name, then you should be able to guess this phylum will produce zygospores. Okay? Zygospore. They are also produce the sporangiospore right? and some produce conidia. So this zygospore is sexual spore. Okay, this is sexual spore. This is non-sexual spore. Okay, so this zygomycota produce sexual spores is called zygospore, and non-sexual spore is called the sporangiospores. Okay, and then the second phylum will be ascomycota. Again, from the name, then you should be able to guess this phylum consists of fungi that produce ascospore as their sexual spore. Okay. And they also produce the non-sexual spore is called conidia. So produce both, okay? Produce sexual spore and non-sexual spore. The next one is going to be basidiomycota. And from the name, again, you should be able to guess that this phylum consists of fungi that produce basidiospore as sexual spore. Uh, they also produce the conidia as non-sexual spore. Okay. And there is another one. It's called the crito, critrido mycota. Uh, they have a special spore that have flagella. So mostly this spore will be produced in the... Uh, water ecosystem aquatic ecosystem because flagella usually used for swimming okay for movement and then the last one will be all the fungi that do not produce sexual spore so this fungi only produce a sexual spore so mostly this one are yeast okay yeast are fungi that do not produce the sexual spores. They only produce the non-sexual spores. Okay. Sometimes this one is also known as imperfect fungi or deuteromycota. Uh, okay. That's the scientific name. Imperfect fungi or deuteromycota. Uh, examples are yeast. Okay, for identification, okay, if for example, for clinical identification, then take the sample and see under the microscope, then we have to uh, check eh, what is the hypal type, whether septic or maybe uh, non septate hypae. Okay, and then you see the spore, how it look like, whether it is sporangiospore, conidia, basidiospore, uh, ascospore, or zygospore. Okay. So we perform this identification. And then colony texture, uh, if it is mold, for example, uh, what is the color? Uh, maybe brownish, okay? Uh, yellow is uh, or maybe white color and etc right so this is the mold uh, texture and pigmentation uh, physiological characteristic and also checking the dna uh, usually you may be using the uh, pcr to see the uh, genetic makeup of this uh, fungi so this is usually used for uh, the methodology used for identification. Now, roles of fungi. Okay. Uh, just remember, most of them are beneficial. Okay. They are actually uh, 
uh, what we call the primary decomposer. Okay, so together with bacteria, okay, they are actually primary decomposer. It means that they decompose the waste organic, uh, waste organic. Okay, so like for example, uh, if we throw our food outside, then it will be decomposed by this fungi and bacteria. It's become uh, nutrient for plants. So they actually remove a lot of waste product, okay? Especially organic waste product. Uh, they also, okay, so this is the, the primary composter over here. They also produce uh, good uh, thing uh, like antibiotics, uh, some fungi like yeast is used for making alcohol, okay, uh, making organic acid, vitamin, uh, making food like bread, for example, okay. Uh, cheese, all right, yogurt. Okay. So these are beneficial uh, roles of fungi. But some of them also have adverse impact, like they can cause disease. And again, disease that caused by fungi is called mycosis. They can also causing the allergy to some people, produce toxin, eh? like aflatoxin, for example, that can kill uh, human, okay? And then they also can destroy crops eh? and food storage. Okay, so these are some roles of fungi. Okay, this is our focus in this class, which is mycosis, the infection that is caused by fungi. There are two types of infection. The first one is called the superficial infection, usually around the skin. Okay, so epidermis, and this is a skin. And this is the name of the infection. And then this is the name of fungi that causing this infection. We will learn this more uh, or deeper in chapter 22 later. But right now it's just a list of some type of infection uh, and location of the infection and the species or the fungi, uh, the pathogenic fungi that causing this infection. Okay, again. Uh, the skin infection, uh, tiny fursy color, this is caused by this uh, fungi. And then in the hair epidermis uh, and also maybe under the skin, uh, dermis is under the skin, like uh, ringworm infection, okay? So the infection under the skin, you're gonna see like, a, like this, like a ringworm. So this is caused by fungi. In the mucous membrane uh, under the skin, okay, or in the nail, okay, like candidiasis, eh? and this is caused by this fungi, okay, candida albicans. Uh, yeast infection maybe in the mouth, uh, uh, in the sexual organ around sexual organ, okay, it's called the candidiasis. And then uh, the second type of infection is called a systemic or deep. Eh? Systemic usually carried by blood and then going to uh, organs inside our body, like for example, lungs. Okay, uh, lung infection. Uh, these are several type of lung infection. Again, we will learn this in chapter. 22 letters. Okay, so we're gonna learn more about this type of uh, fungi infection uh, or mycosis that enter 
the lung uh, lung and skin okay so so this like bacteria i mean this fungi for example if it's in the skin can cause skin infection but if enter the lung it can cause lung in, uh, infection okay i think we finish for this uh, lecture yeah, about fungi and then we will continue the next eukaryotic organism which is protis algae and the protozoa i'll see you later goodbye